Hey guys, so here bringing you another video. Welcome to another dev update. So we did one of these last night, but it was about something else and I didn't know this was coming. This was the thing that I was actually waiting for. And again, you guys genuinely really love uh, these and, you know, it gives a state of like what a riot thinking and it, it it's, it's a good place to begin conversations. So today... Uh, well, actually, technically two days ago, and I'm recording it now and uploading it tonight. Um, Riot is giving their thoughts of like how they feel the game is right now when it comes to damage, items, all that stuff. And I'm sure all of us have our opinions about it. I definitely do myself. Um, so we're going to go through all the points, see what Riot are thinking. And I first thing to say is we here at the Huzzy Games community, obviously we're a fairly mature audience, but it's especially compared to a lot of League of Legends communities. So I, you know... We can have disagreements, agreements, whatever it may be, but keep obviously the conversation civil. That, that in the end of the day, that's how you get movement and progression of things is you have nice adult conversations about it. Um, so in the comments, you can leave your feedback of what Riot is thinking, uh, but obviously just be a bit adult about it. But, I, you know, I, I probably don't need to say that because, again, our community is pretty damn good. But just in case, because I know some people, let's say, get a bit passionate about it um but the, the second thing to say is riot is never gonna kind of in these dev updates they're never gonna just fully go things are bad jesus christ we need to fix it they're going to obviously no matter what it is put a positive swing on it so some of the language i'll be looking into some of the language riot uses and even if they admit even one little thing that is probably bigger than Riot is wanting to make out. So that is also one thing to say, sometimes at least, um, because a game company wants to show confidence and like they don't want to say like we mucked up. Um, so there's that too. So where the first, before we even begin like the state of the game, what is my thoughts of the state of the game? So going through, I think in this is like the damage items um, and all that. So as a quick summary, I think there's still way too much damage in the game. I still literally call League now League of One Shots. You literally, it's ridiculous like how much you can one-shot people of champions that aren't even designed to one-shot things. And again, when we say one-shot, by the way, just to clarify, it doesn't mean I'm using one ability and the champion dies. I mean a one combo. So for example, Annie. Annie is a burst mage, but I believe, and I don't think an Annie at level 6... Even against other squishy-ish mages, I don't think she should be able to one combo another mage at full health at level 6 and kill them. I think that's not what an early game... That's not what the early game is supposed to feel like, but Annie obviously can do that now. Um, and that's not the only example. Like, even a Nivea is, like, practically one-shotting. And yes, some of these champions are getting nerfs and changes, but I think the damage in the game as a whole is a little bit too high still. Um, again, we did quote a little while back, someone did a bit of a research and they went to uh, look, you know, what was the average damage done per champion before the new items and then after the new items, the average damage done in the game went up 30%. So that's a big change. And a lot of that I would say is burst that damage. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it and see what Riot think. So at the high level, we wanted pre-season 2021 and our work throughout 2020 to be about strengthening and improving the foundations of League for the next 10 years. So they are thinking to the future, not always thinking about the past. I wanted to take a quick overview of the state of the game, what we're feeling good about and what we want to improve. The item system update. Uh, we updated the item system to increase strategic choice, satisfaction, and accessibility. We're generally seeing those goals met when we look at the game widely, but we're still focusing on following uh, follow-up work to realize the full potential. So I'm not sure if I'm going to read everything here. Uh, I will say I have given it a little bit of a skim myself, um, but again, give my opinion first, and then we'll go into what Riot thinks. So items specifically, I'm still not a fan of the new items. Um... I think most of them are fine because they're, they're just generic League of Legends items. They're not that bad. But I, I am a really not a fan of the items that are giving champions mechanics that are actual champion mechanics, for example. Like, I know that might sound weird, but like I'm not a big fan of a, a Gale Force giving a non-mobile AD carry a dash every 90 seconds. Because to me, that's a champion mechanic, a dash. But now an item's giving it to you. Or I'm not a massive example of a champion like Zed having now invisibility with Drakthar because stealth and invisibility or whatever, that's a champion mechanic. But now an item is giving it to him. I'm not a big fan of when these items are giving champion mechanics. Um, 
it just feels a bit weird. And again, I said it right. I was in a dev meeting with Riot before preseason that they invited a bunch of content creators. And it's what I asked. I asked the question, um, do they feel like the new items are just kind of covering over some of the champion weaknesses that they should have? A champion is designed to have both strengths and weaknesses. And these items, let's be honest, are covering up a lot of those weaknesses. That's what they're doing. So the game to me feels really bland at the moment because it's the same champions, it's the same items. There's no, there's not much different item builds going on at all. Um, and I, it just doesn't feel healthy. So that's why my initial going into it. So you can tell I'm not a massive fan of the new items for the most part. Um, they just feel a bit too gimmicky as well, but that's just me. So they're saying most champions and classes are seeing a wider set of item choice that suits different games, but there are some cases where choices are either not there or not clear enough to feel satisfying basically we're, we're seeing roughly 20 champions crossing our mythic hard binding threshold so the same mythic item bought every seven over 75 percent games i again i don't want to call riot liars or anything obviously but i doubt that like every game that i'm seeing in league it's the same mythic for every the same champ like most ad carries right now are buying gale some of them obviously are buying kraken but they're buying that every game. Like for mo for me, I'll say my mid lane champion pool. I buy the same mythics on the each of my champions. They don't change. I played a bunch of top lane today. Bought the same mythic on every champ. Like the like Malphite is gonna buy Sunfire every game. Annie, I buy Ludens every game. And Nivia, I'm gonna probably buy Ludens every game. But if it's a tanky game, I'll buy Leandre. But to say only 20% of champions are buying the same mythic, I think that is really undercutting it. I, If I had to guess, I would probably say about 50% of champs in League are buying the same mythic every game. That's what it definitely feels like to me at least, but let me know what you guys think. We're going to be continuing to address these gaps to get close to 100% of champions with meaningful build diversity. That said, build diversity is one of the value among a long list. So they're also adding like satisf 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 satisfaction, counterplay or champion uniqueness and stuff. So they are taking that into consideration too. They're never going to get to 100%. Like... <laughs> You know, I, I'm not trying to give Riot a hard time here because it's the same no matter what video game it is. No matter what video game, you know, League of Legends used to have talent systems or rune systems, but then it became the standard. Every single iteration of items, there became the standard. It's the same in World of Warcraft. There's the standard. There always is the standard. It, there, there is just probably always going to be. So I think it's actually an unrealistic goal to try and get to a point that, you know, you're trying to make every champion build different things every game. I just don't think it's worth even trying because it's probably not going to happen. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how close they can get. Um, but yeah, in the last few patches, we've assessed the state of item choice, the power level across many classes to tune some of the greatest outliers. So like items like Shirelia's and Ionian boots were buffed. Also mythic tank items. Obviously the vast majority of people are buying Sunfire. They're trying to bring Frostfire and Turbo Chem Tank on the same level. Again, they're not really going to be the same level because they do different things. Sunfire is generically useful for doing the burn damage around you, etc. Chem Tank is only useful if you want to have the speed up. You don't want to have that or don't need it every game on a tank. And the, Froze the Frostfire Gauntlet is probably the second most useful one. But again, Sunfire is just default good. But yeah, there was a reason, by the way, before these new mythic items, most tanks did buy the old Sunfire cape or whatever. Because it was just a standard generic tank item. And it still is. You know, that's that's what it is. Um, <coughs> the upcoming changes, though. Gore Drinker and Sterix. Because let's be honest, in top lane especially. And even some junglers. Yeah, they're buying Gore Drinker and Sterix every single game. There, there's no diversity with that. Um, and Gore Drinker is one of those problematic overhealing items. But they are looking to address it, which is obviously quite good. Uh, balancing and reworking new groundwork we laid in preseason will eventually taper off into normal patchwork on items. Our hope is that by the end of spring, every champion has a range of satisfying, even if not totally perfect, choices. Um, so again, they're, they're, it looks like Riot is optimistic about how the new items are, but they are aware that there are still changes that need to be made and they are making them. And by the end of spring, they hope to have all of the actual changes that they need in the game to all the items and then all that needs to happen is those like number tweaks with normal patch notes so riot again i said i've got a problem with the items as a core riot's never really gonna say that um 
but again, it'll be interesting to see how many of you do you have. Do you love the new items? Are you a Jin one trick that now you love the new items because you can buy Gale Force and it gives you a dash? So now you're more likely to do well because you're not going to get caught as much being immobile. Again, the, every single player is going to have like their likes and dislikes. As someone that tries to play a lot of champions, obviously I'm not biased towards one or two champions. I just kind of see across the board. And across the board, I just see the new items more annoying. <laughs> I see them more annoying than good. But that's just me. And again, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And obviously I'm not League of Legends. If the greater player base loves this, then go for it. That's what League is supposed to be. Um... I just, I'm not a fan. It's not going to stop me playing the game, by the way. And I will say a lot of people have stopped playing the game. And I don't know if Riot's ever going to address that. But a lot of people recently have actually said, um, Hus, what about Flex with Friends? That would be fun. You used to do that series. Um, I don't see that series ever coming back with at least the same friend group that we used to play with. Uh, they've all quit League fully. Like they, they used to play League very occasionally. All of them have quit League. And they've all quit League due to the new items and how much damage is in the game. They, they have all completely lost interest. So, you know, that's where my own personal thoughts of it may be a little bit biased because I know this has caused my friends to quit. Uh, and I know people on my stream are saying, yep, I'm not interested in all the damage. I've just stopped playing until they fix it. So, again, I've got a bit of a personal thing in it too because obviously I'll keep playing no matter what. I'm a League content creator. But for the more casual player who are not tied to the game... They don't love it right now, it seems. But anyway, the item shop. So this is one thing, again, I don't want to be a negative person every on everything. I actually like the new item shop as a whole. It's still a little bit confusing sometimes to end up getting to places you want to. But that's just probably like getting used to it more. We were used to one shop for 10 years or so. So again, it's just getting used to it. I'm fine with the new item shop and I think it does a good job. Um, they actually say here, like, again, lots of players are using the new recommended tab. I think the new recommended tab is really good. So again, if you don't know how the new recommended tab works in the store, it's actually using data from the game that isn't random. It's looking at higher rating games and matching it to percentage of what your game is like. For example, if you're playing Ari and the enemy team has got uh, a Cassiopeia, a Nunu and something else, what they're going to be looking for is a high rating game and high rating data that has a, someone playing Ari and a Nunu and a Cassiopeia of the enemy team. And what did that high rating player build in that match? And then it's going to recommend you that because it's like, oh, a high rating player built that. That means the high rating player is building that. It must be good. We'll recommend that to the low rating player. Like if it's a Banshees or something. Um, so that's what it does. And I actually think it's quite good. Uh, it, it's in essence the same as going onto all those guide websites that people go on to, but it's doing it in the game. Um, because that's all those guide websites do, like Mobilytics, etc. It's just taking the data from high rating and seeing what people are building into specific matchups. That's all it's doing the same now that Riot System does as well. So overall, I think it's good. The new store, I would say, is good enough. Um, did I think the old store needed to be updated? Not 100%, but obviously they chose to update it because they did a full rework of the items remember how each season is working now riot basically picks one thing to completely overhaul because league is quite an old game now so last year it was the elemental dragons this year it's and the map this year it's the items next year will be something different i wonder if they'll ever do the graphics like the actual graphical engine maybe they did it a few years ago like five years ago by now uh, but when the mobile game arguably looks a little bit nicer than the computer game, maybe the actual computer game may need that kind of boost and upgrade. But we'll see. Uh, position balance. So I would say, again, going off this, jungle is still the solo queue position to play. If you want LP, you want to climb, play jungle. Uh, you still have the, the biggest impact in the game. You can impact all three roles. You impacted the objectives. You impact the other jungler as well. So... That is what I would say. Um, and, I, you know, top lane is still fairly... It's weird. Top lane is still not incredibly impactful. But right now the lane is quite strong. But it's just because it's so off to the side. AD carries are ridiculous right now. But only really two of them. Because, um, yeah. Riot's, again... Riot's general balance for years for AD carries. Two or three AD carries are strong. The rest of them are really weak. They'll nerf the strong ones buff new ones and then two or three of them are now strong and it's kind of like a rotation thing uh mid lane i'd say is actually okay as well um i've had very big carry performances this season on mid um the damage feels good but 
Mid can get kind of shut down more by the enemy jungler, though, by anything else. But yeah, let's see what Riot are going to say. Uh, with so many item changes this preseason, we were anticipating some needed follow up on position balance. We look at both pick rate as well as position's ability to influence the outcome of the game to assess its power and health. Bot and support landed weaker before the update, but we focused on following up, etc. And we've now recovered those roles appropriately. Again, I'd still say AD carry isn't great. Support, I'd say, is fine, but maybe not Enchanter supports because you're not really seeing Enchanter supports all that much. Maybe Seraphine, I guess, because they've got the new... What's that item people a lot of people are using now? It's Moonstone and a Star for the Flowing River. A lot of people are doing that now, and apparently the healing is just broken. Um... But that obviously will probably get balanced and fixed. And then where does that leave Enchanted Supports? AD Carry, again, still not great because it's only two or three AD Carries that are even viable really anymore uh, that you'd want to actively play. But obviously sometimes both of the two strong AD Carries get banned and that's where other people have to play other things. But when it's Kaiser and Jin every game, uh, when it leaves like, oh, someone's not playing Kaiser or Jin, and one's, let's say one person is Kaiser, the other one doesn't play Jin, you always feel a little bit bad. If you're if you are, you're the team that Jin is banned, the enemy team have got Kaiser. In your head, you're kind of like we're at a disadvantage here in AD carry. So that kind of what's AD carry like right now. But then on the radar, um, on the future is the jungle position. It's one of the most influential, powerful positions. It, it is the most powerful, but also low popularity, meaning. Uh, there's a satisfaction or accessibility problem keeping it from being appealing despite how powerful it is. We've made light touches, changes on this front a few times in recent years, like adding jungling tools to champion kits, putting a camp timers on the minimap, and increasing viable path options so more champions can take through the clears. Um, I will say, I read this when I was doing my little skim read, and it literally seems that Riot has no idea why people don't want to play jungle. No one cared about giving Nar jungle options. That wasn't going to make people jungle. No one really cares about adding minimap timers. Junglers didn't care about that. A good junglers were doing it anyway. The reason why jungle is the most powerful role in the game, but the least played, is because how powerful it is. And people will be like, wait, what? It's so influential, basically, as most of you would probably kind of go with, and obviously the saying goes, jungle gap or better jungler wins. Most games of League now are determined by which jungler does better, which jungler has lane pressure, which jungler gets objectives, because usually that also comes with one jungler getting ahead in XP, one jungler gets behind in XP because there's shared XP camps and only one jungler can get them. There's Rift Herald plays that can break a tower in one charge. Like, you could be winning top lane against the 1v1, the enemy jungler gets Rift Herald, comes top, ganks you out of the lane, you have to go back, you haven't even died, you're winning lane, and then by the time you get back to your tower, your tower's dead. That's jungle influence. So the reason why jungle is the most impactful is because Riot has put so much into the role. Again, objectives, gank pressure, XP, all that stuff is very powerful. But the reason why nobody wants to play it is because you feel you're either winning your team the game, but it's the other thing. Most, like 50% of your matches, you're practically the reason why your team loses as well. People don't like that. It's too much pressure. So if Riot truly wanted to make the jungle actually more popular, lessen the power of jungle. As crazy as that sounds, lessen the power of it. Lessen the XP differences that junglers could get because that makes the jungle unhealthy because one jungler is getting really ahead, one jungler is getting really behind. Make it more even or lessen the power of dragons. So if one team doesn't get every dragon because the jungler was ignoring it, they're not completely out of the game. That's how you have to make jungle back if you want it to be healthy and people to play it. That's what you have to do. Again, it, it really does a little bit worry me that Riot seem to have no idea why people don't play jungle. And again, it literally is because it has too much pressure on the role. That's why. It's, it's again, it's not adding camp timers on minimap or adding the top laners, like giving top laners mechanics that they now can jungle. Because I think what Riot was hoping is top laners would now jungle with their top lane champions. I think that's genuinely what Riot was wanting. No, it was never going to do that because it was nothing to do with what champions are in the jungle. It's all to do with how the role is. But that's, again, that's what it is to me. To me, that's fairly obvious, but apparently not to Riot. Uh, worth noting, we've seen positive reception to the new jungle item experience of buying a jungle starter and getting, yeah, I will say I am really a fan of the new jungle thing that you buy your starting item and then it disappears after five smites and then it just becomes part of you as a champion. 
thumbs up from me. Like, it kind of felt awful sometimes to be bogged down by the jungle item, that they were strong early game items, but they weren't that strong in late game. Well, now nobody has it. So, and let's be honest, a lot of junglers nearing the end of last season, because people didn't really like them, a lot of junglers were ignoring buying the jungle item. They may have bought, like, the Stalker Blade, but they never completed it into Warrior or whatever. They just left it there, and then eventually they may have sold it. Like, I think it's healthy. I I'm really a big fan of the jungle change, definitely. And some people were hesitant about it, but I overall think it's pretty good. Burst damage. So, again, we, as I said, I call League, League of One Shots right now. So, we'll see if Riot considers that as well. Uh, at preseason launch, many players felt an increase in burst damage because there was, uh, mostly coming from big item actives or passive procs, uh, past the point of where we think the healthiest and richest version of LOL gameplay should be. So even Riot would admit, yes, there was way too much damage, but this sounds like they think it's still okay, which is worrying. Uh, when damage gets too high, counterplay and in-combat decision-making suffers. So this is what I've been saying, guys. What have I been saying for weeks? When it's League of One Shot, the skill in the game doesn't matter. Like, skill goes down when the damage is high, because you're just one-shotting people with one ability or like one combo that you know that's not really that skillful when there's when the damage is low and every single ability matters every little ability could make the difference between winning or losing because the damage isn't that high that's really skillful like that's the point when you have to make sure you dodge everything and all it's great but when you're in mid lane and Anivia doesn't even hit her Q or something, you're just standing in her ultimate and she hits you with E and you've just been chunked two thirds of your health. You're like, what the hell just happened? She didn't even hit her Q. That's the problem with too much damage. Um, so yeah, Riot are admitting the, the skill, counterplay and all that stuff goes down when the damage is too high. So we began looking into the issue once preseason data stabilized enough for us to be sure it wasn't just noise right after, right after the big update. So they obviously looked into it. Again, it was fairly obvious. I think there was way too much damage, and I think there still is. In the last few patches, we've pulled bursts from multiple sources and are back to a reasonable state. I don't think so. Though still probably be at the higher end of acceptable. So as I said at the beginning of this video, Riot is never going to say, we mucked up, we're doing bad, blah, blah, blah. So for Riot to say this little line, though still probably at the higher end of acceptable, to me, that's Riot saying the damage is still too high. So... Yeah, please nerf the damage, Riot. Again, we're not asking to be just nerfing individual things. We're just, just, it's it's like, imagine a dial of damage done. What we're just saying is, again, well, like I said, 30% on average damage increase, what is everyone was saying. Just tone it down. Just tone everybody's damage back, I'd say at least 15% from what it currently is. Maybe 20%. But like, damn. Again, I do hope Riot's, you know, they do act on this. Uh, we're continuing to evaluate whether more changes should be made. Yes, please, yes. Generally, we try to stay uh, in the range where burst light mages and assassins, uh, well, mages and assassins, can kill an outer position carry, but not so bursty where they can do, um, they can do so without hitting a full combo or when missing important skills. That's what I said earlier. Like, again, Anivia can just, like, boom with missing something. Or Annie could one-shot, but she missed a W. Like... That's happening way too often. Even now, like still now. That isn't just like, oh, a month ago. Even now where Riot is saying like, oh, it's maybe acceptable. No, 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 it's not. It's still happening. So uh, we also use math. So, well, so yeah, we also use mathematical, mathematical analysis with historical comparisons. So how much damage is a full talent combo in season 11 versus season 10 versus season 6. Uh, another method is to test cases like LeBlanc's time to kill versus a vein at both having typical builds. This accounts for shifts in targets defenses uh, with also all that stuff. So they are looking into it. Again, it would be great if Riot released this. Like, if they released the data going, hey, this is actually how much Talon's burst was now, blah, blah, blah. Because it has to be more, right? Like, it has to be. Um, I would wager Talon in a full burst damage, even from Season 10. I'd say he at least does three, 400, at least more damage. Um, even in the early game. Maybe in the late game, a lot more. But there's that. Snowballing. Uh, so something we always watch closely is snowball, which tells us whether the game flows in a way where player decisions are impactful at all stages. One of our preseason goals was to avoid power creeping at the item changes and increased snowball would be one of the worst symptoms of messing up because finishing items earlier than your opponent would give you a bigger advantage. This is something that I was concerned about, if you remember. Snowball currently looks similar to the last seasons, which is good. 
Data aside, we know playing from behind in league can be very frustrating, even if you still have a realistic chance of making a comeback. Being at a disadvantage will probably never feel good, but ideally a comeback opportunities are present and viable enough to keep games fun and exciting until the end. So I, I don't think snowballing is really bad right now. I still feel it sucks if you do get behind a little bit early and they have their mythic, you don't. I still think that doesn't feel great because mythics are so powerful. Um, but when it comes to snowballing, yeah, I don't know. Like snowballing is always going to be around in League. It, it just is. One team is going to maybe get ahead and then you snowball. Like that's the nature of what Riot's been doing the last couple of years when they're rewarding play you know you get ahead in the early game you get all the dragons oh you got the dragon soul because you won the early game or oh all these tower plates that you get bonus gold from killing towers early well now you're even richer than your opponent in the early game too from killing towers so riot do reward early play like that's what they're doing like again if riot didn't want to just reward early play the tower plates wouldn't disappear at, at 14 or 15 minutes they'd just keep the tower plates because then you could get them later in the game but they want to reward early game so that's why tower plates give you gold only in the early game. So Riot is helping towards Snowball. There's no doubt about that. But I don't think Snowball is really bad. Um, I think it's still definitely there. And obviously because of mythic items, definitely, you know, what one team has completed three of their mythic items. One team only has one mythic item. Guess who's probably going to win that team fight? But I don't think it's... I, I think what I'll say is League, in terms of Snowball, has been worse to where it currently is. That's I'll, I'll say that. I think it, it, it's not as bad as it has been in the past. So that's good. New champ of VGUs. Um, so obviously we spoke about VGUs in yesterday's second video and like Riot's learnt about them. They're going to like keep the core to the champion the same uh, because, again, they feel basically bad for players who commit a lot to a champion. And if Riot were to completely change that, it kind of screws over those players. So even though champions are continually going to get reworks, they're, they're, they're hoping and they're kind of saying we're not going to screw a one trick over by reworking their champion, for example. So I think that's good. You know, I wish every champion got really reworked, but obviously I'm not the audience of this. Like, I'll play anything. I, I'm not tied to a champion. So if, if it gives kind of like a little bit of a um, a reprieve for, let's say, Udyr, if he wins the popular vote for the rework, if Udyr mains kind of go, oh, okay, good, right, said that it's still kind of be going to be Udyr and we're not going to get screwed here, I think that's overall a good thing. Like, in the end of the day, people want to have fun in their video game, right? Uh, but... The uh, so 2020 champions were successful on both satisfac ugh, satisfaction and appeal fronts. Okay, comment down below. Do you think 2020's champions were successful? Um, so again, to remind everybody, the champions that came out were Set, Fiddlesticks rework, Volibear rework, Lilia, Yone, Samira, Seraphine, and Rel. Um, oh, they're saying here the only champion that came out really strong was Samira, who was off target. But there's that. Um, would I say that the champions are overall a success? Personally, and this is where, you know, let's go through each champion individually because I think that's the only fair way to go about it. Set. I'll, set. He's mixed for me. I played a lot of set, obviously, at the beginning stage when he came out. Enjoyable champion. Still don't love his true damage. I think that is still a bit of a meh mechanic. And I actually quite like the champion as a support, not a top laner nowadays. I actually think he's cool as a support. Fiddlesticks, I'd say he, that was a relative success. Um, I think they definitely kept with the, the theme of the champion. They made, honestly, I think they made Fiddlesticks better. And that is the point of a rework. Sometimes you're a bit like, eh, it's not really better. They made Fiddlesticks better. The theme of the champion is fantastic. Like, I even know the video game DBD, Dead by Daylight, is a horror game. Even that community of devs were impressed by Fiddlesticks. And they make, like, killing hit like people part of their game like horror people and even they were like damn fiddles cool so that's awesome volibear i'm a bit mixed about um i do think volibear lost a little bit of his identity from the rework but obviously they added different things i, I i'm not a big volibear player in his current state and i don't think i'll ever be but that's fine um so volibear to me i'd just say is kind of like yeah it happened lilia is a weird one so initially i didn't think lilia was very good but boy, I think I'm wrong. Lilia actually is quite a 
damn good champion. And watching good Lilia play is actually a joy to behold. Uh, they dash around high speed. We're well, not even dashing, jumping around, prancing around with their movement speed, perfectly using their Q like a Darius, but at a higher speed, landing this ball, sleep. I actually think Lilia is a really cool champ. And if I did ever return to the jungle, she may be a champion I play. Yone, I don't like. <laughs> uh, Yone to me is unhealthy um for the game and it's mainly one mechanic that i just dislike and it, it shouldn't be a surprise to people yone has echo ultimate i don't think that's a very healthy mechanic for the game so I, i'm never gonna love yone and obviously they're not identical because yone does take the damage he doesn't reverse the damage but it's just a bit meh when a yone can e then r then flash and dude he's like crazy distance away from his ghost kills somebody and then just snaps back he's like yo that was fun Got to, I got a kill. Woo, let's go. That just doesn't feel great. The counterplay to Yone as well doesn't feel awesome either. Seraphine, that champion for me, and the, again, the controversial, the Seraphine community is a little bit toxic. Um, but I, I think Seraphine just has rubbed way too many people the wrong way that I could call it a success. They had to delete her whole backstory because it was too controversial and people hated it. The champion in the community there is huge arguments and people are being toxic over is she a mid is she a support like it's just this champion has caused so much headache for people that i i'm if i'm completely honest i'm just staying away from that champ you will not see me playing seraphine probably ever because i cannot be bothered to deal with a headache i just can't rel this is the arguably the weirdest champion this season because i actually think rel is pretty good Maybe she's not great in current meta, but I do see Rel having a future in League. Uh, and I think she's better than a lot of people think. But she was completely forgotten about. Like, completely. People just kind of forgot that she got released. But I actually think she's quite good. I like her theme as well. I think she, it's fairly unique. Um, and it offers something different. Again, her backstory from memory is like she was forced to do stuff that she didn't want to do like imbued with magic or something and like she was raised in noxus but now hates noxus so it's a cool backstory um so that's good to see so uh, out of that i would say success actual success fiddlesticks lilia and rel maybe to a certain extent and then kind of well yeah neutral set volley bear Samira, again, did I, I kind of forgot about Samira. Yeah, that champion's busted. Um, that champion's still, you know, you're not really seeing the light of, like, her every game anymore because they just, they've they over-buffed two other AD carries. And obviously, they have massively nerfed Samira since her launch. But Samira, to me, is always going to be a problematic champion. She has the Akali rework effect that she has fundamentally some broken things with her kit. So either she's going to be in a state of really strong and, like, good players will abuse the champion because she's so strong with good players or it's not worth playing her because they've had to nerf her so much the only way that you fix her i think is just taking parts of her kit away that's what they, there's too much in her kit but uh yeah um and then finally ranked so ranked at the moment um we'll say my ranked experience are going really badly but i'm just trying to have fun but part and parcel of the the toughness of the early season that arguably if this didn't happen, maybe I would have had a better start. There was an actual bug in the early season that MMR was adjusting too slowly, causing LP gains to be a bit lower than expected overall. So some people, even on a big win streak, were gaining 12, losing 16. And by the way, I heard worse cases than that. I heard some people gaining single digits and losing 20. Um, but what is this? Again, Riot won't want to admit it, but that has hurt people's climb because let's say for me, I was doing okay in the early season. So therefore my MMR should have climbed and that should have given me better match quality, better teammates, better enemies, but better match quality overall. But instead I've been stuck with bad teammates because my MMR didn't actually increase from my okay early season. So yeah, kind of feels poop at the moment, but I'll keep persevering, keep playing, seeing what I can do and hopefully we'll just climb anyway. But it has been addressed and yeah, it's going to, it's going to take a little while probably to fix it. And I'll say the one problem I, I do have definitely with Ranked, it does feel like every single season, Riot is doing something to the ladder that mucks up the early season. I don't know if that's just me, but it does seem to be quite a, a prominent thing. But anyway, that is going to be the whole discussion. Overall, I think Riot 
what I like is that they are focused and they are talking about things. And that's always a good, healthy thing when your developer is talking about how they feel the game is going. Thumbs up for me. It's always going to be. Riot has got so much better with communication than they were like years ago. It's, it's great. Like, again, I've been invited to dev meetings that I can't talk to you guys about or I can talk about after the fact. That never used to happen. Um, so that's great. Like, it is. And these, they never used to do. They're doing these every few months. Thumbs up from me. Let me know what you guys think, though. Feel free if you want to break down your comment per, like, little uh, section. If you want to do that, go ahead. I'll read through as many as I can. But overall, I'm optimistic about the game. I definitely feel there's too much damage. I'm not a big fan of the new items. But there are some things that I do, I am enjoying. Like, again, good League of Legends play is still satisfying. Good skill for League of Legends play. And that's, again, why I think the damage does need to be toned down. Because the skill of the game has definitely been hurt by how much damage is in the game right now. But anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys enjoy, throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.